Squads to commit for the kill, that's the ulti. Oh, no, flash, no, flash, no, Vengar, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can. I can go on Rex and Tubo, dude. No cap, no cap. Can I go in, guys? I'm going. I got Vengar, 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 I got Vengar. Has hell frozen over? No, it hasn't. Fnatic won their first game in their best of series, something they are not used to doing. They didn't do it versus BDS, nor Vitality, nor Heretics. I hope that doesn't spell the inverse in terms of how this series is going to go for them, but it can be such a hopeful sign. Um, and. For us, like, if you're a neutral, it makes you happy because at least you're not getting a 3-0, but maybe it's a Fnatic 3-0. Yeah, no, I thought they had really good tenacity this game. I think they really came back from their rough early game. I think the swap, they had a good plan. They were diving the side on repeat, trying to get the advantages for Noah, and then eventually they tried to fight G2, but it kind of didn't work out, but then they had some really good comeback fights later. They did, but let's start with the draft and kind of what was telegraphed, Nuke. Uh, when it comes to lane swaps, you know, how much is it telegraphed because <laughs> of the picks that G2 fielded? I mean, the moment they first pick uh, Rek'Sai and the answer with Zyke, right? And the instant went Scion and showed the flex in Rek'Sai jungle, it just showed, especially with the Tristana, right? He's probably one of the best champ with Jinx or lane swap. It just showed that you're going to lane swap, so... Yeah, and what did you think about Fnatic's replies? Uh, I think they replied the best way because when enemy lane swap, it's so hard to actually just match them and try it like you have to think twice. Um, but Fnatic just decided to dive bot and repeat, but sign 10 death, uh, cosplaying the buffs. Uh, <laughs> so it was really good by them. They got even and they just got the team fight right and they won by it. But I think even with lane swaps coming through, it's not like one team heavily benefited over the others. Like going into like the 15 minute mark, they were kind of even in the same aspect, if not G2 taking the better fights initially, got all six grops. They put themselves in a really good position to find a way to just straight up run away with the game through, well, sheer individual outplays as we're seeing for Ansama. He had a phenomenal early game on the Tristana. And I think that's all I really want to leave it at with G2. Like these early skirmishes we saw from them were good, but they started dropping the ball as well. They did, but I think what we do need to highlight is that you find here a strategic game plan and wanting to find pressure on the map versus early on a Fnatic that's thought, kill, 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 that Scion, right, Finn? And actually it looked good from G2 because that's the way you can beat that. Yeah, I mean, I think Fnatic used overreach many, many times in the early game. I think they focused on killing the Scion here. You see, they're, as they're shuffling in, trying to kill the Scion, then putting himself in a risky position to get caged by the Vagar. And uh, you see here, it's like the Tristan just wants to use these grubs that you got earlier to hit towers and get a gold lead in a natural mm -hmm. manner. But eventually, G2 actually crumbled and gave it back to the uh, lead to Fnatic. But I think that's really where we see... Um, I don't even know if it's a skill or an ability of Fnatic at this point, but it's really just making sure that the enemy team at some point just drops the ball, think they want to fight for something, where they don't want to fight for something. It's kind of this where we've talked about it a lot, but they just bring you into a situation where forget about opening up the map, forget about going for specific turrets or camp, just keep the fight going, fight, 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 and that's why they want you to outplay you. Is that how you feel when you play versus Fnatic? Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, like, especially the game, you can clearly see, like, both teams after the early game, what, like, they were thinking about the map, right, and everything, but when it comes to mid game, it was just fight after fight after fight, and when you go into the cycle, you just you just can't go out of it. No, you can't. It just keeps going. And Fnatic is really, really good at that. We saw that versus Vitality last week as well. Uh, but Finn Jun in this game, his Renata is tremendous. We know it, but it was in every single fight as well. But Jun owed every choke point this game. I feel like every time G2 try to commit onto them, Jun had a great ult or a great flash uh, Q to like kind of stop the engagement from G2. And also you gotta realize this sign was very far behind. And whenever they play front to back, I feel like the sign just got shredded every single time while the sack bought so much space with the CC in the back then of Fnatic. Yeah, and you know, there's certain players that will make enchanters seem like playmakers. And Jun is one of them on Renata here. He's now 6-0 on the champion and he's been phenomenal on it. Like 100% KP in a game that had That's 29 ga kills. 29 kills and you were part of all of them. You know, that, it was, that's absolutely mind-boggling. And I think he absolutely smurfed and was the X factor that Fnatic needed in this game. I think so too. And when you watch G2 games uh, often, you know, even if they don't have the perfect game that they would want, you have to be afraid of them when it comes from mid to late. But Fnatic, they didn't really let them have those chances. Uh, they were really crisp on the engages and on recognizing when they should go for the kills or not, I, I feel like Nuke. Uh, yeah, I think they had a pretty good like uh, adaptation against uh, this team. G2 likes to like settle and try to think about the next play and how to play the map. But even though like sometimes Fnatic just overforce and create random fights, 
it's good for them because they don't let G2 breathe and it's just fight and then it's just skill check, right? Yeah. Looking at every fight, I just gotta emphasize Oscar didn't sack this game, by the way, because okay. he did so much yeah. in every of these fights. He was jumping in and I don't think they had any peel towards him in the Fnatic comp. Like Rek'Sai, Lulu, it's very hard to peel the sack because the Vega catch is a slight delay, so every time you could jump in and put on so much CC in the back then. Yeah, but I also think like Caps there, like it looked good in the early game, but he got so uncomfortable by either Razzog, by the sack that you're highlighting, like it was mega difficult for him to play the game. We're going into the next draft. G2 has chosen to stay on the blue side. And as we get into it, Finn, I know you were extremely angry at that Rek'Sai pick. I wasn't extremely angry, but you I were extremely you were angry, angry at it. But, but I feel like Rek'Sai doesn't make sense you're in a facts. lane swap setting because Rek'Sai really likes volatile lanes where she can influence with the tunnels and come from different angles to gank. But when both teams are swapping sides, there's no real gank angles because you know which sides she's on. You don't have to be that scared of the ganks early. So I feel like maybe the different jungle pick would be more useful. Maybe like a, a Rel or like a Poppy would do a lot more in this case. Probably scenarios. frustrating game for you to play, actually, thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, I would, I would say if you get the Rexa, just put it up. It's such a strong top laner. I don't see the value in jungle right now. Okay, well, we'll see where the draft goes with G2 electing to stay on the blue side. Do we think they're going to go for similar shenanigans or do you think they're going to go more standard in this early game? I mean, the, I don't know, wait, no, take it away. <laughs> uh, I have no clue. I think uh, G2 should, in my opinion, just play the normal game and try to, like, not lane swap. And when we get to this stage, we will see actually which team is better. So, so yeah, let's, let's hope they don't lane swap this time. But it's also like, I feel like G2's laners are very, very strong. Like, you have bro broken dead against Oscar Winden. Don't you just want to leave him in that matchup? Yeah. You got to give him, like, a matchup where he can influence that more than Oscar. I feel like that's one of G2's paths to success in this specific matchup against Fnatic. Maybe they were more like, okay, against Adam, we don't want to play these matchups, but against Oscar, I think you should embrace those. I already think, you know, taking away the sack as well, you're putting yourself in a very good position if you want to play standard lanes to grab the Rek'Sai on first once yeah. again, and then just play that tank match. I do there. think we're going to see the Rek'Sai first pick if it's not by Fnatic here, like almost guaranteed. I think, But I think they're going to keep the effects for a bit longer and maybe just answer with a mid support pick or AD carry support on 2 three instead, and just to keep those flex option open. We will see what Fnatic is looking for. They're thinking heavily about this band, the Ash band really... Yeah, they yeah, do right. ban the Rex, which was to be expected. Now, la yesterday, Talia was really high prior in this yeah. spot. Uh, we're going to see if actually G2 values it in the same manner as BDS and Fnatic did yesterday, or if they have another idea in mind. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like they will first pick the Volibear, right? Um, they just want to give Yaik a good early game agency. To to yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, he will 1v1 one, one one in the jungle for sure, so... I will tell the Jack. Okay. okay. I, it's, it's, making, it's making me think yeah. of yesterday, actually, and we doubted it, you know, because the Ash was also, well, now it's banned. Yeah. Um, but Noah absolutely shredded on it. I'm really surprised to see Hansama not taking the Kalista when it's open, because you should Draven and uh, Kalista are permaban against Hansama, yeah. and if they're open, he's the first one to take That's those. True. I Drop don't know what he will take into probably so, Paris, right? Yeah, I would assume he has something prepared into the Kalista, giving them open, or did he just value the Volibear that much higher than the Kalista? But are we just <laughs> saying that they can't oh. lane swap again? I was going to say, I think All right. that Kalista going into the day, like the reason why Fnatic, I mean, G2's not caring about it, is the fact that they know that if they lane swap around it, and you put yourself out of that bot lane, like Fnatic is kind of flipping it, because they need to find the right lane in the early game to make sure that the bot lanes are matching. I don't... If you are Fnatic and you played that last game, you are 100% confident that you'll outfight them, I think. You're not that worried about it, Yeah. I feel like. But I also think like you'll find better, like I already think Polybear instead of the Rek Sai for, for Yike is way better, yeah, right? And like, of but of course having the Jax makes it a bit easier to skirmish against the Volibear. Once again, if you just split the map completely and you never find yourself in these matchups, that could have been a counter, like it's still very viable. Yeah. I can see where the G2 thought process is coming from. And to emphasize, the G2's early game lost, the game was actually very good. Yeah. It, not, they didn't lose the game in the first 20 minutes. They lost it around the, the fourth dragon, I think. Isn't that crazy? The top laner died like, I don't know how many times and the gold was even. Yeah, no, he was, he was being chilling up there. He was. Uh, seeing a lot of support bans coming out there, they're not being targeted after June had a fantastic game. And meanwhile, they're just banning the common parents with Jinx, Nautilus, Lulu. Nikki has looked for the fresh in the past in similar angles. We'll see if he looks to bring it he out. He said on uh, Euphoria that it was the pick. pick but it's very yeah. scary to blind fresh when Blitzcrank is open, though. So yeah. I assume we will see a Blitzcrank ban if he's looking for it. I mean, I guess he can blind fresh uh, if they're going to land swap, right? Um, I mean, this is, this is the problem, I think, I guess G2, like. When you look for this type of aggressive bot laner, like Vars, Ash, Kalista, this type of stuff, and they don't show AD carry, you just know that they will land swap. And they can just pass by this and just go to team fight. And I think this time they have a way better draft at like just playing the game in mid game, right? So I think it will be way easier for them. I think we're going to see like a fresh Talia here yeah. coming out from G2. I think the Talia is su such high value against uh, Jax, Kalista, Cassante. 
looks like he wants to go for the Seer instead, which is just a bit longer range. But now G2 has the Jinx, the Seer, uh, like, yeah. carry uh, the two towers yeah. that he just carries in late game. Um, sort of very long range, very high DPS. Yeah. They definitely need some scaling on Fnatic as well, because if they do not get ahead, like, have something that bridge, they can list the priority from mid to early, they need something that takes the power in the late game. Humanoid did play uh, as, um, as Aurelian Soul yesterday. Not the best laning phase, Nuke is laughing next to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, like the, the champ got the, like, he got the macro nerf, uh, considering his Q. Basically, before, you could stand on the minion and press Q, and it will hit the enemy champion. Now you cannot do that anymore. So a lot of, like, aspect of laning phase got just uh, snipped out, uh, mm -hmm. like this. And I think if Azir is playing good this matchup, he, especially if he got a little better, I don't know if he will, but he should, like, hard the matchup. Um, I think overall Orion Soul, especially with the stack uh, conception, with the Q nerf, uh, kind of like put the, the champ a bit down. Oh, we saw it yesterday. Humanoid, of course, started really badly in his laning phase, but it's all about if you get to yeah, later in that game. I'm actually really excited to see June on this Nico and what it, what he's what he's going to do in terms of influencing the map and maybe having secret engagements. It's so fun with lane swap, right? Because yeah. you're not used to maybe a minion of a Nico just coming up when one lane has lane swapped and suddenly there's a Nico in the wave when it's that yeah, like crazy. there's actually ways that they can play around with it a little bit. Of course, it's easy to count the minions, but when there's so many communication going around when you're having lane swaps, it might be a little bit of a joker. I can't believe I missed there was a Nico support. Yeah, that's you crazy. Were looking, I was like, why is nobody talking yeah, about this? Yeah, I didn't realize it was Nico. That's okay. so It's yeah, not his first going, one, right? We're going to the casters. I'm going to fire all my analysts. You what? take it away, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shox. Sorry to our analysts who just got fired for not noticing it's support, Nico. We have seen it once before. We've seen it in other regions as well, and we'll get to see it again here in Game 2 of the LEC Spring Finals G2. Looking to bring it back. We saw some adjustments, especially in the ban phase, that have trickled down to two pretty different drafts overall. All I'm saying is, Betty called the Nico support. You know, so many people just need to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Betty, you're so smart. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. Smart yeah. Yeah. You. Oh, yeah. Um, I will say, Jun, obviously, great game one. Yeah. We and all I'm saying also is the carrier today also played Nico support. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Like, I'm seeing the and parallels. He did the showmaker fist at the As a showmaker door, fist? Yeah. The I'm LCK getting a lot of LCK through. vibes okay. yeah. right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all I'm saying is if we, if we you know, hype up Jun anymore, we'll just get a little yeah. sign on the front of the <laughs> caster desk. Well, we Jun is... hype 25 cents. <laughs> we, can, we officially change our we profession need the to Jun merchants. Fans. That's all jump in with Jun fighting. the sign is here. It says Jun hype 25 cents. The first one's free, though, most certainly, because he earned it. We'll see if he does it again in this first, game. First, like, the meme was Mickey over Carrier. Ain't no way. It's kind of like, Mickey over Jun. Ain't no way. I mean, <laughs> I've very impressive game one. Not surprising to see the Renata band in game two. And now, Thresh versus Nico. You know, two champions who can take over a game or Now, hang on a minute, a gentlemen. Hang on a minute. Yes. G2's on the wrong side of the map. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, the idea... G2 wanted to... Wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying wait every time you say wait. <laughs> Sorry, I was really confused because, again, Nico, she got me again. I was like, why is Jax going top lane? Not Jax, it's Nico, obviously. Um, wait, this is... I wonder, so, like, we weren't paying attention in terms of the very early levels. A bit of deep vision was invested. We were too um, busy selling Jun. Yeah, we were. And so, Fnatic, I don't know if they anticipated the swap or yeah, if yes, this was... They did. We, we, yeah. did, we played the poker game. They, yeah, G2 yeah. bluffed top. Fnatic thought they were anticipating the swap. They guessed wrong, which is double disastrous. Because which then G2. resulted in a bot lane invade, which now is giving G2 all of these resources. Broken Blade is helping the clear to make this go even faster. Now Razork is attempting to uh, cross map, which is the correct play, and Oscar Rinnan is looking to match up with him as quickly as possible. The adaptation here is they're giving some gold over to Broken Blade. Broken Blade, I think, just walks up, uses his Demolish proc, walks away. Knows that he can return to top once that wave balances out a little bit. I really like this from G2 because Jinx is just the infinitely superior tower taker, and it was risky to kind of predict like this, but because it pays off, G2 are going to be so much happier with how this early game will play out. And don't forget, also, they are able to take turret plates fast on that bottom side, so they, they end up bluffing into the correct side of the map that they want to be on as well, so you can already see how many plates are taken on the bottom side, whereas one hasn't even cracked. And now they, and they swap, get to swap. Yeah, because they push in bot lane, and then Oscar, he was the one that started sieging onto top. Now, the, the downside for this bot lane of G2 is that this wave is slow pushing away from them, but... I guess the good news is that they can immediately get onto the plate. Oh, oh god. Humanoid. 
Nice use of the slow there from Humanoid to create some space between him and Caps and also stop Broken Blade from closing any gaps there. Yep. Singularity and Obnoxious Ability, and we've seen a lot. Uh, you know, when this matchup goes well for Azir, it's usually on the back of finding the scoops in the mid lane around level 6. When it goes well for Aurelian Soul, he's just this inevitable threat with a damn strong laning phase. I mean, it's super hard for any composition to deal with. G2 may similarly struggle, but for now, obviously, the focus remains on the lane swap. A lot of early, active map movements from both sides. It's a level 1 Broken Blade standing next to Yike here and just ensuring that G2 can probably knock down another plate or two. Keep in mind, it's only two people on the bottom side, so even though Broken Blade is level 1, he just walks up, decimating Smash. Most of the wave is now gone, and if Noah sticks around for too long, it's going to cost him. I mean, they, they got info on where Razzle was. So they know that they can make this TP play bot. Broken Blade commits his flash because he's worried about the root from Jun, but he's able to catch some farm, and now he's finally hit level 2, looking to get level 3 as quickly as possible, and I don't think that Fnatic is in a position to punish him like they were in the previous game. Caps is the one who's suffering, though, as Razor just jumps in. There were already positive trades in the 1v1. Razor stand corrected. Worse. Broken Blade ignited, ticking. Will delete the wave. Noah gonna walk away on a sliver of life. Nicely done by the Fnatic bot lane. Jun gets the lockup, immediately flashes away from the decimating smash, and the damage is there from Noah in the early stages, but you are still getting a lot of terror plays taken here from Hansama and Mickey, and Oscar Inan hasn't been able to farm for the last little while because he's been kind of chased around the map, got zoned off of this top terror as well. So a little bit of gold going over towards Noah thanks to that kill, but again, it's kind of Oscar Inan who's suffering in this one. And I think it's a bit of a difference between the Cassante and the Zac. Both can function very well on low resources, but Sante obviously would like to have a couple of items under his belt. Doesn't have that same immediate long-range engage, that kind of utility that is always good, regardless of how much gold you have. So keep an eye on how effective Oscar and it can be. But at the end, even kind of when the dust settles after the first few minutes of gameplay, we're in a very similar situation to what we were in Game 1. Fnatic finding a successful dive on the bottom side, limiting Broken Blade, G2, doing their best to keep moving these lane assignments around, trying to find a greater advantage, but Half shifted bot lane, giving avenue for Fnatic, Razwork and Jun specifically to take these grubs. I don't think you can really trade for the Dragon on the opposite side, which is a bit of a win for Fnatic as well, because you just want to be looking for turret plates and accelerating this Jinx as quickly as possible. Jun has got a broken blade before he gets the tower and get a good junk onto him, which would just set up now for the dive as soon as this wave collapses. Broken blade, no flash, no TP. Doesn't have a ton of tools here. Wow, level 6 is in the mid lane. Looks like Caps wants to scoop back, but a flash away from Humanoid. Nice play from Caps to get the flash advantage. So need to play it careful. Broke Blade again, just gonna get locked up and deleted. Zombie form. I mean, really? the saving grace here is a hook from Mickey. G2 finally gets something back. Game 1. It was all Broken Blade losing his life in the early trades. This time, though, they're finally able to catch out Oscar, get a pick in exchange. TP now comes through. Oscar knowing that he's one going against the AD carry is Caps, Caps in danger. In, but Razork is there to back him up. Flash away from Caps. Immediate flash ball. Ulti coming in from the Aurelian Soul. He starts to spit fire onto Caps. The Caps has Yike to body block. That's Razork taken down. Jun running. Humanoid running. Already used the flight. The flash from oh. Mickey. Oh, he's not happy about game one. He's looking to bring him back here in game two. Massive win for G2. They zone Humanoid off of that entire wave after they get the pick onto Humanoid. I'm sorry, get the pick onto Oscar Inan. So Humanoid has to walk around and Mickey. then he goes down as well. Look at Mickey, look at Mickey. Lantern spots him. Hook connects immediate cleanse. Free bit of value delays the recall and gets the summoner spell. Tempo, man. It's so I mean, huge interrupting the back. Well. I think he stopped him again. Yeah. We're going to look at the replay. Oscar trying to play safe, avoid the bot tower. Gets caught out by Yike, who bear in mind has a two level advantage. Humanoid doesn't really have the HP, and he wasn't expecting the hook to come out from over the wall. We move into the play, and uh, Caps just finds a good position here. He's looking for Humanoid, he finds him, realizes I'm in danger, need to flash away. Nice flash follow up from Razok, but he's, I guess he should be expecting Yike, considering he just killed Oscar. The big problem is that Humanoid, the uh, Q doesn't go through Yike, so he can't actually get the damage out of Caps because Yike is blocking the way, and that means that Caps is just able to walk through without having any more damage tossed his direction. So while all this was going on, you can see that Noah is still sitting in the top lane, trying to trade back where they can, but uh, more plates going in favor of Han Sama. He's going to secure another one now as they chip away at Oscar's HP. Dragon being started off by Yike. Level 5, both junglers so close to level 6. The question is, are they going to try and force this fight? We see Fnatic force dragons more often than I believe they should. Caps going. Pushback doesn't quite connect. The Astral Flight taking Humanoid. 
just out of the edge of that hitbox, but it will be Drake. To the side of G2 again, Broken Blade likely to die in the dive. But Jun tanking tower gives him a bit of extra space here as Noah also tanks a bit more. Again. I'm getting a lot of bounce energy this yeah. series, you yeah. know what I mean? Good death. Good death. Thought. I Good death. Death. Yeah. <laughs> it's not negative gaming, like you said in game one, but there's definitely some question marks that can probably throw in BB's way. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Is you're still getting a 300 gold lead for Noah off the grand scheme of things because of the deaths. And yes, BB is getting to farm, but when you look at the experience, there's very little difference between Oscar Inan and BB, but be Oscar Inan's only died once and has given across yeah. a bunch of gold, you know? So well, it's kind of even an out a little. And it's really the plates that Han Sama is picking up versus the kills that Noah exactly. is picking up. So AD, again, we're in the situation where it's relatively even, even if in terms of champion scaling favors Noah early on. It's really mid-jungle where G2 have started to build themselves a pretty decent lead. And it's really important to, in the early phases of a lane swap, not tunnel too hard on the goal differences, just because the main goal is to get Han Sama out of this matchup, right? You don't want the Jinx to be playing into the Callista because of how dangerous that laning phase can be. Instead, you get to reach your first item, which he has now secured. He's going to have way more wave clear, and it's going to be safer to move him around the map. So ultimately, G2 have achieved their goal with a few benefits, given, as you rightly said, their mid-jungle find themselves in a very comfortable spot. Still looking at the top side, though, because Fnatic, they finally match into Han Sama, but they can approach the wave. Oscar is on the bottom side. There's just too many numbers here for G2. So this tower is going to fall, and now it's really dire straits for Fnatic. John ticking over to level six. Has to be careful about stepping too far forward. Does manage to lock up Mickey, just really wants to clear the wave here. Humanoid has recalled. TP not quite available, most likely just going to use the Astral Flight back to mid lane to make sure that he can cover Broken Blade in a TP bottom lane. So it is just a 2v2 now on the top side. Hansama has to be careful, that's the go sign for Jun. As well as for Razork waiting off to the side, but G2 going to back away. They know they've gotten the time, or all the time that they can on the top side as Broken Blade picks up that wave. Yike, I think this might be a bit over eager, but Cass is there to cover, so doesn't need to be too concerned. Do not want to give away that five grub buff to the side Keep of Fnatic. on mid. Also, Oscar moving his way through the bot side jungle, drops a control ward deep into G2 side of the map. Astral fight forward. So hard to outtrade the Aurelian soul, but Caps extends it a bit further to at least make it even. Comes Oscar. Caps gonna be in trouble. Footwork forward. The extra slow now coming in. Doesn't quite land the Entofu strike, but Caps has to be careful here. I mean, this should give control enough for Fnatic to secure the grubs. That's going to be five on the board, help them a little bit with their sieging. I will say that when we think about hitting towers and sieging in the later game, Callista is a champion that's not the best at it, just because she's relatively short. Cat once again goes in, perhaps trying to bait the flash there from Humanoid, but he remains steadfast. He's able to get away to safety. Is This should be another pipe at a minimum going in favor of Fnatic. And obviously, the later we get into the game, the scarier the Aurelian soul becomes. The amount of utility that he can have against an immobile champion like the Jinx is pretty overwhelming. The Thresh will mitigate some of that as G2 set up a bit on the top side here. 3v2 for now, but Yike Zion. coming in behind. And Broken Blade, as you highlighted, on the way. Doesn't have quite enough range on the ulti. Instead, it's going to be focused on the Siege here as Hansama tries to clear this wave as quickly as he can. Meanwhile, Caps keeping up the pressure mid lane to make sure that Humanoid cannot roam top. Yeah, I don't think he can go for the dive here. G2, though, Oscar Inan still has TP and can join this. He's already shoved that fall very low on mana. Flame Chompers turning back on Yike, thinking he might be the weaker target. TP now coming in, but Lantern ferrying them out to safety. They get Noah's all in exchange. Good deal thus far for G2, but Fnatic buy themselves a bit more space on the top side. That was a double TP, so really well done by G2. Fnatic over-invested, and because of that Lantern, they're easily able to get Yike out. If you notice, no one else really approached the tower, so bait out the summoner spells from Fnatic and even getting another play for Caps in the mid lane. G2 slowly accruing a gold lead. About 900 gold for the time being. Dragon spawning in about a minute's time. G2's focus is on this top tower. Fnatic though should be close to their first item on Noah. I imagine on next base you'll be able to secure that and I think Fnatic shouldn't be too afraid to go for the early fight. Rylai's finish on Humanoid is a really nice pickup just because of all the utility that you get off the back of that first item. You can see these resets coming through, the Empowered Ultimate available for Humanoid as well. He's a tick off of level 10. You can see that on his portrait to the right. So a little bit behind in terms of experience from Caps, but we know that as a result of his TP when he tried to make that play top lane. Saved though by Mickey's Lantern.
close to level 6 himself. He'd love to get that before the dragon fight, but it does look like both teams are poised to go for that 5v5. Good news is the box not the most impactful spell overall. Obviously valuable to have with the lantern and the hook. May prove to be more impactful in the fight to come. Six seconds until the Cloud Drake spawns. It's not going to be a Cloud Rift or a Chemtech Rift. Let's see where the Dragon Buff takes us, but Fnatic poised to fight, clearly want to group. They should be stronger in the skirmish. Noah at one and a half items. Much more powerful than Han Sama. Broken Blade trying to get something back on the top side of the map will likely knock down this tower, but Fnatic have used this opportunity to set up control of the pit to get mid priority. G2 are just going to give this. They're like, we can just get gold onto BB, we can get more terror. And there's only a single turret play left in the mid lane. Ooh, ooh, tried to the steal, but there's only a single turret play left in the mid lane. So realistically, if Fnatic all reset now, Han Sama just pushes in mid and they can probably get that for themselves as well, especially with BB collapsing in onto the tier two with that wave. Now can sneak in behind Noah, who's by himself. Keep your eye on Broken Blade, Cyan ulti is up. Noah realizes the rest of his team gone. He now needs to back away. Broken Blade has been in Fog of War a little bit too long. It's a good read from Noah. Play aggressive onto that initial wave before BB can really come across. And it means there's no wave for G2 to actually play off of. So they have to back it on up. They will move Mickey into this bottom side to try and get some vision on where Fnatic are after the reset. We'll spot out a lot of members there. Now you'll notice Fnatic sending a lot of resources towards this mid lane. That's because G2 have their eyes set on it, unlocking this mid tower, but also Herald being alive. Broken so an Blade, attractive. they're going to disable the tower as well. They're just trying to kick the fight off. John looking for the disengage ultimate. Caps on the backside though, pushes back too with the skies to send. Fnatic desperately holding on, and here comes Humanoid. He gets one reset. He starts to back away. They need to cancel the Breath of Light if they can, but that's the second reset. Moving right into the decimating smash, forced to size it, but Noah continues to step forward. Noah, John, Humanoid still standing. Mickey goes for the hook, but he does not find it. The play will fizzle. The mid lane tower finally drops, but it's no Oscar pushing in on the top side at the same time and no one keeping up the pressure mid. A heavy commitment from G2 with which Fnatic respond beautifully. They don't even have Oscar available and in a 4v5 with the tower disabled, they still find two kills along with the tower in the top lane. You'll see this initiation come out from Yike, the ultimate from Broken Blade as well. The combo initially looks quite promising, but this ulti from Jun creates so much space between Caps and the back line. Razzle immediately dives onto the front as well, gets a three-person stun underneath the tower. And while the ultimate comes in from Humanoid to do massive damage on the back line, they force G2 to back away while Oscar secures the top tower. Jun getting the interrupt onto the chauffeur from Caps was massive. The fact that he got that lockup means that he can't get the play off, buys time for the Iranian Saw to come through, and then the Fates call from Noah means that they can't target Jun, who's the lowest member, so really well played by Fnatic in that fight, and again, Jun being the hero that Fnatic needed. Certainly, Dragon Blade now just walking away, essentially being farmed for stacks by the side of Humanoid. Gold, slightly in favor of G2, but with a Herald in the back pocket of Fnatic, very likely it'll even out shortly. Broken Blade. Vulnerable here on the side lane. Three-man blast gun coming over. He is in for a oh, not-so-pleasant surprise. CC from the Counter-Strike trying to back off, but there's no way for him to clear. Humanoid now bringing one in as well. There's just nothing Broken Blade can do. I mean, I will say that Broken Blade, he's been prepared to lose his life on the side lane in exchange for trying to secure farm and XP, but we're past that point. At this point in time, you want to be avoiding dying as much as possible. And Fnatic are just continuing to punish him. They use the Herald to attack bot. I was expecting him to throw it mid, but G2 are cross-mapping. They know that Fnatic have invested multiple members towards the bot side. They're sieging on mid. They're going to secure this tower, rotate towards top. But I don't think they have much of a wave to play on, and they're going to be forced to disengage. Ultimately, not too bad of a trade for G2. Humanoid is going to stay on this bot side, push in the wave, and then start to group up with the rest of the team in mid. I think at this stage, Fnatic, it's more of a, we are going to try and set up vision on the bottom side for the Dragon that's up in a minute 30. But destroyed. getting that mid tower is pretty big for G2, because you will still be able to shove in pretty aggressively and then linger over towards bot, shift up towards that top side as well. And if you ever try and go for that sort of play again as Fnatic, suddenly that's... As another outer tower going down, a single outer tower will remain. So Fnatic definitely have to be careful about looking for these trades again. And when you have vision control in your favor, Thresh feels like such an impactful champion, especially with Volibear as well. Obviously, this is still in the range of the early to mid game where Volibear is going to feel at his best. We'll start to fade away a bit as we get later into the game, but G2 
certainly have the tools to fight for a bit more control across the middle of the map. I will say, though, a lot of the advantages for G2 are starting to, dis to disappear, right? You look at the mid lane that was 1.3k, 1.1k gold ahead, now down to within touching distance, which is 300. Yes, you've got an advantage for Yike, but Humanoid is starting to come online. Jax is starting to come online, so you aren't as favored in the mid jungle as G2 anymore, and that could spell problems for their team fights. And, you know, Honestly, dragon champions are wreaking havoc. It was Smolder, you know, the development arc of baby dragon to grown dragon, humanoid from dragon to AC-130 gunship from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. It's, you know, the natural progression. He's there already. You see that dot on the ground, you know you're dead. He's got the kill streak ready to go. Just don't give him the 25 kills for the, uh, the, the, the sky's descent, you know? <laughs> I, I feel like it's gonna come, you know what I mean? And that's, I feel like there is pressure on G2 while you can always argue, you know, is there some parity and scaling between an Azir and Aurelian Soul? Certainly, but Aurelian Soul just gets so much simple value the longer this game goes. Jun is walking up. Jun is looking. Jun. Flashing, instantly gonna grab three. Oscar off to the side, trying to split caps out of the fight. Mickey now in trouble. That's one picked up by Noah. The carry's playing beautifully on the back line together. Humanoid finds the reset. Now stepping in, Hansama ghosting. Yike taken down. Humanoid can just fly again. Raining fire from the skies, but caps. Hansama broken by trying to play around this tower. Alti going down, locking up two. Immediate follow up though. They've got Hansama in their sights. Razor goes in and finds it. It's a shutdown. And again, G2 are crumbling in the mid lane. It's Noah buying a bit more space. Breath of Light going through the fly. The tower though just continues. Caps desperately trying to escape, dashing over the wall. They want to follow. Noah wants to kill, but he's going to get embarrassed in the 1v1. Not today. Godlike on the Callista. And again, G2 crumble in the fight. Fnatic out, team fight G2 once again. They continue to get the better of them in the 5v5, and we have to look at the support player. Jun with a three-man knockup to start off the whole fight cements a huge victory for Fnatic. And you can see it here, he knows he has the Fates call available, so he's like, I'm going in, you better follow and Fnatic very quickly to come on through, so it's Fnatic start to collapse, they get Mickey. Oscar in does a great job of buying the time from Broken Blade and Caps, drags them up to the top of the fight, which means they get to take care of Yike, who's not particularly tanky, and Han Sam is just ghosting to run for the hills as Fnatic continue the fights. Crucially, Caps was removed from the fight on one side, and then Han Sam just didn't get to play on the other. Forced to retreat, playing on the defensive, it felt like the G2's carries, the crux of what makes this composition work, never had an opportunity to deal damage, and Fnatic executed beautifully. Another dragon in their back pocket. And that's two games in a row now. We've seen G2 go for these lanes to off scenarios. And two games, it has not come down to how well you play the map. It has come down to how well Fnatic have team fought. And they have been destroying G2 every single time they meet 5v5. And while G2 have talked about wanting to grow in the mid game, it was their early game last year that let them be so explosive. They let them blow open games in the first 10 minutes through a lot of the time bot lane 2v2 now they're lane swapping to avoid the 2v2 and noah and jun despite that are still incredibly impactful in the games jun standing off to the side oh. taken by yike just what they need but fanatic now set up for the fight keep your eyes on humanoid off to the side the pushback is there the ulti is there he's burning everybody down now he has the reset trying to get away but the angle's not quite right g2 now clearing up trying to clean up the fight in exchange broken blade and yike the last two members standing but they've got the baron buff it's a disaster for fanatic what the hell just happened g2 out of nowhere they steal the dragon and they steal the lives of fanatic right from out underneath them 3,000 LEC assists for Caps. Also it's just coming out of nowhere. Out of yeah. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> Congratulations to Caps off the back of a Baron steal for G2. I mean, what? I mean, we, I was what? concerned that Fnatic was taking a flip here, but I didn't think it would happen like that. Let's keep track of Yike on the bottom right hand side. Flash smite. Just like that, the Azir wall comes in to kind of coax Fnatic into a very awkward position while Caps and uh, Hans Summer get taken out of the fight. It's just the bruises on the side of G2 that end up cleaning up. It was the timing of the Flash Smite and the Jinx Rocket at the exact same time meant that they just weren't able to uh, respond to Fnatic. They <laughs> the just response hit the at the same time. was very much like, ah, yeah. it's not good, but we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> And now Perfect. Fnatic in the mid lane. You still got G2 trying to collapse. Humanoid right. off to the side. Gonna get the reset. Nice hook on a Razor. Could start the towers there as well. John gonna get pushed back by Caps. Crucially keeping the back line relatively safe. Human right off to the side. Needs to be able to do damage, but Noah taken down. Yike on a rampage. 
Numeroid with a good ulti to try and disengage the fight, but G2 found a bit of an edge, and they are not looking to give Fnatic away back into this game. Humanoid's ult did stop G2 from being able to follow up, but G2 are happy to not take the lives of Fnatic. They're happy to just take the base instead. Lantern there will reposition Han Sama out, and just like that, G2 have full control over this game. I mean, G2 are given a chance with which they have pounced on. But they're going to be feeling frustrated if they do walk away with a win here. Twice in a row now, it feels like Fnatic have been the better team fighters. I think the idea behind forcing the Nash is good if they can use it as an opportunity to turn and fight, but they committed to the secure. They lost the 50-50 and now they find themselves in this situation. A good initial hook from Mickey chunks out Razork. He's going to follow it up with another one. The slow connects into another hook. And Razork, well, he's forced to retreat. A nice ulti comes out from Junda by time for his team on the retreat, but Noah, he's got nothing left. He's used everything in the toolkit. And as Humanoid uses that ulti to buy space, G2 unlock an inhibitor. And Humanoid hits a five-man ulti, but the cooldown is not there on the initial engage when he hits the singularity on the G2 backline. That slight timing difference, the 10 seconds that he needed for that to come back up, could have been a very different fight for Fnatic, but you know, you hit five people in ultimate, that's 25 stacks, and Humanoid is only continuing to get scarier and scary. He has to be taken out of these fights. We have to look at the bottom of our screens again and recognize that the goal difference is largely sitting on Volley Ban. You've got to remember that as a champion, he tends to fall off a cliff the later into the game you go. So I would not count Fnatic completely out of this game just yet. A single fight can still swing the momentum back in their favor. Also, look at the side of your screens, the summoner spells that are available on both sides. Jun has his flash, which is going to be massive. No no flash for Caps, no flash for BB, no flash for Mickey. There is an opportunity for Fnatic to set up a big play with the Nico ult. Now look at the top right of your screen. Dragon spawning in 15 seconds. Now look at the bottom of your screen. Look how back and forth this game has been. Now look at the top left. It says you're beautiful. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Look away, now look back. We're on a horse. <laughs> Um, contact us, X. Just say, Old uh, Spice, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, <laughs> here we are. It's not going to be sole point for either side, but Fnatic have first setup. Maybe Yike goes for oh, a GP Oh, it will be. It'll be steal. sole point for Fnatic if they secure this. Yeah, but it's not sole yet. Sorry, excuse me. Oh, right, that's Misspoke. what you mean. So G2 can afford to give that one away. They didn't have the setup. No real reason to step forward there. The Skies Descend available for Humanoid. It's going to hit everybody. Next time it's up, more than enough range, most certainly. So we take a breather. We take stock of the situation that we find ourselves in, and it's Fnatic leading in kills, G2 leading in gold. A lot of that gold sitting onto the Volley Bear, but in terms of the carries, very even across the board. Two items finished, four caps, three finished for Humanoid. Of course, caps investing in that death cap is kind of the difference, whereas the Ryalai is a little bit on the cheaper side. Humanoid puts himself in a great position there in the bot lane. Three items for both AD carry. So these teams are primed and ready to fight, and it ultimately comes down to execution. We know the late game threats that our Caps and Hansam at Jinx and Azia have a lot of range and a lot of hyper carry potential. But the same can be said for Humanoid. And we've seen Noah get pentakills on the champion. In fact, if you go yesterday, that's exactly when okay. he did it. Well, the context of that pentakill made it feel a little bit more like a quadra. <laughs> but I will say that, shout out to Fnatic, absolute homey moment where you're willing to give your life to die in a best of five elimination series so your AD can get a panda kill. Uh, heroic effort. But you talked about resetting and I think it's important for G2 to reset a little bit as well. This has not been the dominant series we may have initially respected. They did get a chance back into this game on the back of stealing that first Baron. Second Baron 20 seconds away. They need to rally. They need to play these fights clean and their vision is slowly Look just being Look shipped away. But now the ulti coming in, Hansama flashing out. Mickey gonna die before the fight really even starts. Jack doing his best to try and disengage Oscar and buying a bit more space and Noah completely and totally untouched. Another one falling. Humanoid just continues to fly, but the reset not quite working out. Hansama now is the one that's starting to take over. Keep your eyes on Caps in the picture and picture. He's already knocking down the base. Fnatic, they're desperate to keep going. They need to kill Hansama. Oscar finds the ulti. The knockback doesn't take Hans over the wall. And Fnatic, they want to end it here. They need more. They can't settle. Caps has already gotten the inhibitor. They need to get something else, but the health bars are so low. I don't even think they can get Baron. I mean, that's the second inhibitor secured. Yike is trying to interrupt the backs. I thought the Caps may even try to end the game, but no, he's going to go for a recall. Nine TP's in. Yike is strong. Extra healing coming in from the Frenzied Maul. Another 900 HP, baby! Volibear! Going crazy in the 2v1! Volibear has 
Sunder Sky! What a combo that Noah needs to break! Can he find Yike here? Noah takes the jungler out. Maybe it gets a little bit easier. Now Fanage is not quite to find one. The, the shield, shield! The shield! The shield! The lantern! Mickey finds the hook on the humanoid. It's all falling apart. It's going crazy, but G2 are the ones who are ahead. Cap's looking to snipe the AC out of the sky. Oh he God. just barely lives. No! Go! What? The <laughs> auto attacks from the minion are what finish him off. Just like that, four members of Fnatic are dead. That's two, well, one inhibitor down. G2, can they end from this position? I think not. Baron should be the call, but Razork is alive in five seconds. It's a huge wave of bot side, though. They can't end this, it, surely. Hansama here. I think they want to try and end it now. This next wave should be a super minion wave. Look at the bottom right. This is where it's coming are in. They're going to try to play off this. It's bold, but this confidence you want to see from G2. Cap still has ulti. Is it too bold, it though? John, punching in. Keep your eyes on Razork. Razork wants to try to turn this back with the pushback from Hans's clutch. He buys the space for the Jinx to take over in the clutch. No, off to the side, but it's four members of G2 standing tall. Oh, they're going to bring it back in game two. A triple for Caps to end it. Humanoid, there's no way. G2, he already took out Hansama. G2 just has to try to take it. It's a quadra for Caps. They want to give him the penta. They want to give him the same treatment. No, look out! A penta to end game two in the spring finals. Caps rounds it out with a penta kill. It wasn't clean. It wasn't easy. But G2 bring us to one and one. The split pushing at the very end there to then have them TP Yike on the Volley Bear with that crazy healing. What a crazy way to end that game. Wow, Fnatic versus G2 delivery. It was so close, it was so, so close. It was just coming down to that last little bit where Fnatic started to fall apart. Yeah, and you heard it from the desk, Yike starting to feel like an unsung hero. People are gonna be singing after the last few minutes of the game. I think it's safe to say we'll see what game three looks like as we tie up the series and head to a quick break. Hey, Law. Yeah? I need a bit of help with styling since I'm new here, and I was wondering if I could show you a couple of outfits. Yeah, sure. Amazing, thank you so much. I'll be right back. I'm a Poro snack. Get it? I don't know, man. <laughs> Woo! Mm, no, not really. I don't know, Law. It's hopeless. No, it's gonna be fine. Here, let's have a break. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Back to the drawing board then, I guess. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. Well, this oh! <laughs> <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> ah, gas. Dios mío de mi vida. I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. Red Bull gives you wings.